everybody, Louisa here. Today I wanna to talk to you about something that I learned that I think is really, really useful. I really love the brain. I think it's so fascinating. Our brain is such a complex system. It's actually the most complex system in the known universe and scientists still today don't really know a whole lot about the brain. Having a basic understanding of brain anatomy and function can be really useful and I think the more you know about how your brain works, the better able you are at controlling it. One thing that I find to be very useful is understanding what happens to the brain and the body during a stress response. We deal with stress every single day. The daily minor stresses of our commute to work or dealing with coworkers that we don't really like, or it can be more, you know, major and complex stresses like the loss of a loved one or the end of a relationship. Stress is definitely all around us at all times and it's here to stay. So understanding what is happening in the mind and body during a stress response is not only practical, it's also the first step of learning how to control it. I'm going to show you something that I learned that was actually coined by the very amazing Dr. Dan Siegel, a child psychiatrist and a really big player in the mindfulness community. He used his hand as a model to show you the three parts of the brain and what happens when we're having a fight flight or freeze response. So here is my brain. My wrist represents the brain stem, the oldest part of the brain, the reptilian brain. This is the part of the brain where all of our basic human functions happen. Breathing, heart rate, digestion, reproductive systems, all of that great stuff that we never have to think about happens right here in the brainstem. The second part of the brain is represented by my thumb and my palm. This is what we call the limbic system. It's also referred to as the mammalian brain. This is where we feel emotion. This is where we store memories. And this is where the fight, flight, or freeze response gets initiated. I'm gonna talk more about this in just a second. Over top of the limbic system is the neocortex, the part that comes right up in front of our head. This is the human brain. This is where we have consciousness, analytical thought, rational reasoning. This is what makes us a human being. This is what makes us able to understand our place in the world and to perceive our surroundings. Now back to the limbic system. There's a little part in here called the amygdala. When the amygdala perceives a threat, it communicates directly with the reptilian brain and tells the reptilian brain, do something quick, make a decision, either fight, run for your life or freeze. That feeling you get when you're being triggered as if you can't control your mind or your body, that's the fight, flight, or freeze. This is a really important function to have. This is what keeps us alive when we are threatened. What does that look like? Increased heart rate, sweating, your digestive system completely shuts down, giving you sensations of possibly nausea or having to go to the bathroom. You might experience shortness of breath, dizziness. This is the part of the brain that's pretty much saying, make a decision and make it fast. There's no time to think about this. This helped us to evolve. If you're walking down the street and there's a car headed towards you, you're not gonna stand there and think, hmm, should I get out of the way? You're gonna react quickly. It's what kept us running from the saber-toothed tiger millions of years ago. We need this to survive. The problem is that most people are overusing the amygdala overusing the fight, flight, or freeze response in situations that don't call for it. So little things like getting cut off on the highway, having to wait in a long lineup, someone just giving you a look that maybe seems threatening to you. These are all things that aren't necessarily threats to your survival, but your amygdala tricks your body, hijacks your brain, so to speak, to make it seem like this is a threat and that you should respond in this way. That is why oftentimes when we're having a fight, flight, or freeze response, we don't even know what's happening to us. We can't even control it. We oftentimes don't even remember something until after the fact and we think about it and say, oh my gosh, what did I do? How did I react? What did I say? So think about your day and all those stresses that are giving you this fight, flight, or freeze response. That amygdala is keeps pounding and working and working and all of a sudden, you flip your lid. 
you no longer have control. You no longer have the ability to pause and take a look at your surroundings and then respond. You become reactive. Part of the brain that's being activated is the downstairs part, the brain stem and the limbic system, not the upstairs brain that is able to perceive the world and have an understanding of what's going on. This is why people can become irrational, people can become violent, people can make mistakes in their behavior. That's why people say things that they don't mean. That's why people say things that are hurtful. They're not operating from the part of their brain that understands. They're operating from fight, flight, or freeze. So where does mindfulness play a role in all of this? Well, mindfulness has been shown to improve the function of the neocortex. What that means is that your neocortex actually becomes stronger, strengthened, and has a better ability of taking control. Meditation actually allows you to pause, take a look around, understand what's happening, and then respond. You're strengthening the part of the brain that's reasonable, that's rational, and that can actually pause and reflect and then make an appropriate decision to create space between impulse and reaction. To take a look at what's going on and tell ourselves everything's gonna be okay. Mindfulness integrates the brain. Mindfulness actually allows the brain to work as a cohesive unit instead of the brain being hijacked from just one part. So if you find yourself in a fight, flight, or freeze response, best thing to do is go right to the breath. Just start to breathe. Do this several times because breathing does initiate the parasympathetic nervous system. So the part of the body and brain that calms you down after being triggered. So next time, try to pause, try to reflect, instead of acting irrationally and flipping your lid.